Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words Larry Reed Live, no spaces, 233222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. This platform discusses any and all information that has been made known to the public in any way. If the information creates combo that needs to be had, then it could become a feature story or just something I talk about here on the LRL platform. Now remember, I am not a journalist. I am a commentator. And all of the information that I share here, I want you to always feel as though it is 100% alleged. But! My commentary is always real. All right, tell Naughty Dotty, everybody, that Larry Re Live is on. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page. And Live. It is Monday night. We're typically here on Mondays at 7 p.m. But as of lately, TBA, make sure you put the flyer up now. Larry Live will be popping up whenever I am popping up. That's whenever it's going to pop up. But so I want you to screenshot this, put it in your memorization so that you can remember that I did tell you that we are still TBA, meaning as it relates to Monday nights. But this is really the fourth Monday night, I think it is. Is it? The fourth Monday night? Is it? Uh, or third? Third or fourth. Third or fourth Monday night that I have been live. Do not get used to that. It jo just so happened that things fell and happened in a way to where it happened on a Monday night. But it will not always be like this. All right, welcome to Larry Re Live, your most favorite digital entertainment news and talk show out here on these social media streets. I want you to let everybody know right now that we're on. We need your help because when we stay away for a little while, the algorithm gets strange. Them computers and robots do strange stuff. So I need everybody right now that is watching to hit the like button. If you're on your phone and on your app, just come out of it a little bit, go to the page and hit the like on the video, then click it and then open your app back up so that we can know, let everybody know that we are on. I am really surprised at how many people have not yet figured out this whole internet thing. The people that are watching you, you need to encourage them to hit the like button and to comment because this allows the computers, really the robots, to be like, okay, they really have something hot going over there. So let us make sure that we let everybody that has hit like and everybody that has um, ever shared or watched this show be notified that it is on, make it show up in their news feed. So hitting the like and hitting the share is extremely important. And that is a way that you can support the person that you are watching. And of course, by word of mouth, mouth let everybody know about Larry Re Live. They'll go to Google, they'll go to Facebook, they'll type it in, and I will get to 
meet your family and your friends. This is what we are going to be discussing tonight. Tonight, we are going to be this darn discussing any and everything that come out my mouth when I want to, because this is my show, and I'll be feeling a certain kind of way, because I can't get that in the comments with y'all, but I get up here and say what I got to say. So there's some stuff that I saw on the internet, not just the things I posted that I want to talk about, and I want you to talk about it with me. We are family, and we're going to have the conversation, but because it is Monday, I want to first thank those of you that have sent stuff in the mail. But before we do that, I want to give all of you an opportunity to get very closely connected to the brand Larry Re Live and find out all that Larry Re Live is. It's not just a digital entertainment news and talk show and post all the time and be out there laughing and acting the whole boom. It ain't just that. But we have a whole nother platform in, that's hosted by Patreon.com. And if you come on over there, go ahead and sign up for an entire year, or you're going to do month by month. It don't really matter. But go ahead and sign up, and you will be exposed to my family away from and aside or alongside this family out here. And we have conversation stations. We do input. There's some things already over there that will never be discussed out here, but we saw them out here on the internet streets. And since I'm in the business, I'm making sure that everybody understands the spirit and the motive behind their reliance. There's some stuff I'm just not discussing out here because people get really distracted by it and that misrepresents the brand. And so we're discussing over there in Patreon. Everybody over there already know who I am in spirit. So I want you to come over there so you can get to know me, all of my team, my family members, and get to discuss and see things that people out here do not see. I also want those of you that are watching me, you down there in the comment section, to really begin to support with hitting like, with hitting share, and telling people about the platform. I cannot go anywhere right now and not be stopped and somebody say, oh, you left even with my mask on. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you. Because of you, this platform has been heard by people all over the world. But I want to invite you to patreon.com slash Larry Reed Live. Go there and sign up. Please do that on tonight. Hit like and hit share. I want to thank Many of you that have sent in some stuff up in here on this week. Now, this, I can't think of the person's name. They sent me this big old box with all these different body butters and, and fragrances and smell good. We, in the country, we call it smell good. They sent me all different types and kinds of smell good, for you, thick rub oils and, and soaps and things of that nature. I can't think of your name. I forgot to bring it from down upstairs, downstairs, but you know who you are. Thank you so very much. Also, the donations that have been sent in, I want to say thank you, um, Wanza. That's really nice. Is that what it is? When they put the, the like a Z and they put a line through it, that's a, that's the Z sound, right? Yes. I think so. Wanza Simpson. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Also, let me see who this is. Monique. Thank you, Monique. I'm not calling your last name just in case you want to keep it in privacy and not out here in publications. Thank you so much, Renee. Um, and Renee again. Tara. Oh, you you um you ain't playing with it, is you? Thank you so very much. Uh, who this in? Okay, Nancy, you got to do this. This is somebody named LJ that want to become a patron. They actually sent it to us. For the year, as opposed to sign up for Patreon. Okay. So I don't know how this is going to work. I'll take care of it. I don't know how you're going to take care of it, but they ain't got the information and there's stuff. No, they... There's no name or contact. I got the name. No contact. And they're in Marietta, Georgia. Okay. Well, hopefully but there ain't no listening. phone number or nothing. How are we going to do that? Hopefully they're listening to the broadcast. Okay. If you listen to the broadcast, you need to email us at info at thembnnetwork.org that's info at thembnnetwork it's, it's at the bottom right now For even for those of you that are donating tonight using Zelle it's the same email address info at thembnnetwork.org make sure you um, email us because we ain't got no way to set this up for you because really you're supposed to do it through Patreon okay um, oh Lisa this is somebody that this got your name on it um, Lisa this is like somebody who 
So a lot of people do not know. Larry Live is out here making people laugh, but then in Patreon, we have thousands of people over there, but out of Patreon was actually Rebirth a Church, an online ministry last year. And Lisa's one of the pastors and the counselors there. So somebody that is on her team was telling her, thank you, because I guess she went to attend their father's funeral. I don't know how she did that. I don't even know when she done that. But they're, they're sending a whole lot of love to you, Lisa. And her name is Anissa. Anissa is sending a whole lot of love to you, Lisa. Okay, who this right here? Felice. Thank you so much, Felice, for your donation. And some, there's some man named Kenneth Jenkins, huh? Yeah, she sent you, it was a card. There wasn't no money in it. But it's a whole lot of Thanksgiving. <laughs> whole, lot, whole lot of Thanksgiving right here that she sent to you. Uh, did you go to somebody's funeral? Um, I will, yeah, I've seen it online. Oh, so that's what she was saying. But I, was like, I don't remember you going to nobody's funeral. You done it, it was virtual. Okay. She was so thankful because of what you've done for her. Okay, and that, um, there's someone named Kenneth Jenkins. I don't know who you are, but you sent me a book. I get sent books all the time. And I must say that my black business mind is intrigued by this book. And I want to talk to you, Kenneth Jenkins. So, Kenneth Jenkins, I want for you to email me directly at admin. Well, it ain't really directly, but I see them when they hit admin at larryreadlive.com or you can do that email address the info at the NBN network they'll get it to me but the name of this is called um, the secrets and power of business credit now you know this made everything stand up on end because there are certain things that I know and we know that are entrepreneurs and those of us that have LLCs and nonprofits and things of that nature. Some things that you can do, your, your Duns and Brass Street and, and the proper things in order to have business credit. But because of me always being funny when it comes to the government, that's why I didn't do that PPP loan. It's because I'm always funny when it comes to the government and all that kind of stuff. So I ain't never used business credit um, a lot. I think I did for about $60,000 worth of cameras that the Merrills co-signed for in the ministry, but that was in the name of one of the uh, ministries that I had. But I read the businesses that I had, and I have never utilized it properly. It's re really the reason why I had to file bankruptcy. Um, I filed twice in my life, and one was just because I was young and dumb. The other one was because of being an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur out like there, you take risks, and sometimes it just don't go right. <laughs> and when it don't go right, somebody got to pay them bill. Um, but I wished I had used business credit versus my credit always been on the line. And the Bright Man Group choose to prosper. It's just that simple. The secrets and the power of business credit. Kenneth Jenkins. So if y'all know who Kenneth Jenkins is, his first edition, you need to tag him, Dr. Kenneth Jenkins. Tag him down here at the bottom and let him know. He's talking about how to build your business credit. I want your credit, your business loans and credit lines. And the reason why I want to talk to you is because I'm going to bring you over there in Patreon to have this conversation because I have a lot of business owners over there. A lot of people with LLCs. About a year ago, it's something that we all did that had these talents, these giftings, and these abilities. And we have been taking money, getting paid for it, but we never properly set it up. Last year, we've done that. So I want to make sure that I get in contact with you because you didn't give me any contact information at all. You signed it. You thanked me for making you laugh. And you are dropping some great knowledge in here. And I want to bring you on as one of my experts in Patreon. And if you are watching me, you're talking, okay, I ain't no read. And Larry Live did that. So you don't even know. You don't be paying attention. You, you Listen, you can't listen to nobody else talk about me but me. I know me. And those that are on my staff been on me for 20 plus years. And over there, we got Dr. Jill, come to find out. She's my doctor, come to find out. Her, me and Bishop Jakes have shared the same doctor because he made it public, so I'm making it public. Um, Dr. Jill talking to us, walking us through the, the coronavirus. Also, Dr. Hock, Hopkins, Hoskins, something was saying that right. Mm -hmm. We also have the Clarks that are therapists and been helping a lot of people in Patreon. They came over there and talked. And then we also have Rosalind Weems that does all of our start market, market stuff. Of course, me and Bishop Jordan, Bishop 
Jordan did the EXPI and all the rest of them was the um, that everybody made money off on of Moderna and all that was the dreams and stuff that I had really early early on. So people have became millionaires because of EXPI and all these other things. And it happened during the pandemic. And we put it out here, some of that. And we put the net out here and told y'all go with that Patreon. And many of you did. And several, several millionaires were made as a result. And of course, they came right back and they donated to the NBN Network thank, and also to Bishop Jordan's Zoe Ministries. So thank you so much for that. So I want to make you a part of one of the experts over there in my Patreon because business credit, all of you are LLC. So if you're watching me tonight, go ahead over to Patreon because you, you have to pay him probably several hundred or thousands of dollars an hour. But once I make acquaintances with these brands, they come over there to me for free and they talk to you for free and they give that out and then you're able to buy their books and things of this nature. So um, we're going to talk about this more later. I hate this. I'm spending a lot of time on it out here, but um, that's important to me because broke is not worth it. There ain't no God in broke. There ain't no God in broke. There are lessons in broke. There are lessons in broke and things of that nature. What is that? I'm still holding on to believe in God for my breakthrough. Oh, this is Felicia, the police, the police woman. You gotta make sure you put all this in there, Nancy, so the prophets can call her and prophesy and pray for her. Okay. All right. Is that it? Am I finished all the preliminary stuff? Now let me tell y'all the stuff I'm gonna talk about tonight. I'm gonna end it on two things. And patrons, y'all might shake a little bit in your boots because I said I wasn't going to do this out here and I was not going to do it out here. But I need to dis discuss this out here and I think I can. There was a post made about Matthew Stevenson. I want to talk about that. There was a post made about Jamal Bryant. I want to talk about that too. But I'm going to talk about that at the end of the show. So I need for each and every one of you to stick around because we're going to talk about this just a little bit on tonight. But first, we're going to start on a positive note because it was a post that I had made. And in this post, I was jumping up in the air and I'd done this uh, photo shoot uh, some months ago. I want to say it was in February or January. I'd done this photo shoot some months ago and I put this picture up just the other day and this is the caption that I put up with this post and I want to address some of you and some of the statements that you guys made concerning this. And this is what I said. I said, take a leap of faith and launch. It is this year, no matter. No, I said, take... It is wrong, ain't it? Take a leap of faith and launch. It. It meant in this year, no matter... <laughs> you left out the word in. It was supposed to be I-N, not I-T. I think I ended up going back and corrected it, but this is the, the old, uh, older screenshot. Okay, that's what it is. God did correct it. Take a leap of faith and launch in this year no matter how scared you are. Now, y'all know I will make a mistake and go back and fix it. You'll see it when it first goes, then it'd be wrong. Especially I put S-N-D, be trying to say N. That's one I do all the time. I always make the same gra grammar, gra 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 what's it called it? Grammatical errors. Gra grammatical. Say it again, Nancy. Grammatical gra Grammatic. <laughs> G word errors. Yeah, and I can't halfway talk. That's why I be calling words wrong and don't be using people's real name. But anyway, I put that up there and put the picture up there. A lot of people were inspired. A lot of people felt a certain kind of way. But then there was some niggas that was in the comment section. You heard me right. You heard they were in the comment section and had so much that they had to say. Before I get to them, I do want to reiterate to all of you that are listening to me that 2021 is the year to take a leap and step out on faith and try your hand at your business, at your vision, at your goal, or whatever your dream is, and push yourself with all that you got and begin to do it, even if you got to do it scared. And I do want that to go home with you. I want that to be in your heart. I want that to be in your head because this is the year to do that. In fact, 
I was discussing this with the patrons at the very first part of the year and told them how the first six months really going to be focused on the individual, doing introspection and doing a whole lot of soul work so that you can get ready for what was going to be coming to your soul in the form of a business and, and for many of you in the form of a relationship because 2022 is all about partnership, even when it comes to business or just on a, um, a, a love level a social level, that is the year of partnership, partnering, merging, and mergers. And 2021 is the year for the prep for all of that, particularly the first six months is all about becoming singular. Singular in thought, singular financially, singular even sexually, about getting your sight and your vision clear and being single in your focus and in your vision. And then as we move into the second half of the year, I explain all of that in January. So I do want this to really hit home, that this is the year to launch. I want everybody in the comment section, everybody. I do a thousand of you watching me on YouTube, on Facebook. There are um, a, 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 six, about seven, six or seven hundred of you watching me on Facebook. I need for you all to type in the word launch right now because I want this to hit home. And for all of you that was in the comment section talking about that this is a Photoshop and I did not jump this high, the devil is a lie. See, what y'all did not know is that I'm from the country. And in the country, we had to cut wood. We had a crop tobacco. We had a run outside all day long because the old folk act like that we belonged outside and we did not belong in, inside. Like we was um, raised the, with the cattle and, and, the, and, the, and everything. The dog be outside, the children be outside. They in, in the country, you kept the dog tied up around the chain. So I got ups. I can jump. Not only that, I was in track. And I ran track for, very, for several years. I, ma'am and sir, can jump unlike you. Because your knees is bad because of all of the fat, bat meat, and cornbread that you have been, been partaking in all of your life. And as a result, that gristle that you sucked on, and I understand sucking on gristle because this is where all the, all the, the seasons get lodged right there. But now it went to your knees. And now your meatball knees can't bend. But mine can bend. I can still run. And I can still jump. And then the rest of you were talking about my feet. Talking about what kind of sandals is them? Those are wedges. I said, what? Ah, what you talking about? There ain't no room wedges. It's the same shoes that I wear probably in 159 different pictures that you don't see me post because I tend to like Giuseppe Zanotti's. So that's what that is. I don't know. It just looked like that in the picture because the way that I'm japping. I said, now why do people just want to go on and they want to go on? To my, you sure love them shoes. I sure do. If I'm going to pay $1,200, $1,500 $1, for a pair of shoes, I'm going to wear that shoe every time I think about it for years. With every outfit possible. <laughs> I got quite a few of them with them gold bars on it because I like it. And that's the reason why that I have them because I like it and I, I, and I can wear it. And I hope and pray and I'm, I believe in God that you prosper as well and that you be able to go get you some. I ain't going to drag it like Kim Barrell like to do to my, well, you can't afford this. I ain't going to do that because I want my community blessed. So you celebrate me as you on the way up. And then maybe the Lord will pick you up if it have to reach way down. Jesus will pick you up. Y'all probably don't know that song. Who sang that song, Nancy? Uh, Evelyn turned teen. Evelyn no, no, turned no, teenager. No, 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 no. That's it's. Um, it is Evelyn turned teen. No, it's uh, it's a female group. If you have the week, somebody put it down there. If we're gonna shout them out. If you have the week, way down. <laughs> Jesus will pick you up if you have to reach way down. Every church was screwing this song up. Jesus will pick you up if you have to reach way That's James Hall vibrato. And James Hall is going to actually be at my spiritual father's birthday celebration on June the 12th. Way down. 
and Ricky Dillard. Wait, hey, 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 now. Jesus will pick you up. Hold on, Dottie Peoples? No. She saying that? No. No, she saying, Is it on time, God? <laughs> yes, it is. Whoa. That's not Dottie. Oh, the Wham Sisters? That sounds more right. So it's the Wham Sisters. If you have the rich friend, no. It ain't the true fest. That's the true fest no. saying, I don't want no peanut butter and jelly. Okay, so it is the Wham Sisters, okay? Now, I don't know if it's really the Wham Sisters, but this is what the folk in the chat is saying, so we're going to let it be. All right. Those of you that are watching us on Facebook, we need all of you guys to hit like and share right now because we are going through a shadow ban and everybody cannot see us here on YouTube on, on Facebook. So I need all of you to get your likes up right now. They but 36 of y'all to hit like and they hunch. What, what, what is wrong with people? How are you gonna come over here and watch secretly? And then you don't share with everybody. Let everybody know that we is on. Hit like and ain't but eight shares. What is wrong with y'all? <sighs> Lord have mercy. Okay, so we agree the women's sister natural. Did you do any Google to find out if it's them or not? No, but let me do it right quick. Yeah, so we find out because we want to make sure we get the credit to the right folks. I don't know if it is um if the women's sister or not. I don't even know nothing that the women's sister saying, so liable it is them. My dad had the whole album. Of the Williams Sisters? Yeah, it's the Williams Sisters. It is? Okay, so the Williams, shout out to the Williams Sisters. If you have the reach, wait now. <laughs> Jesus will pick you up. Jesus will pick you up. Jesus will pick you up. She will pick you up if they have the reach way down. Hallelujah. All right, since we're in that vein, let's go and talk about some another post that I made that was si sort of serious about the father fracture and daddy's devils. Now, a long time ago, 2018 and 19, I really woke out. The whole conversation about fatherlessness. And the reason why I wore out this topic concerning the fatherlessness is because when I was pastoring traditionally those first 20 years, I spent a lot of time dealing and seeing a whole lot of guys that come from the street, guys that come from other folk churches, guys that just were the, the husband of the wives that was on, okay, way more women on church than men. That was, but anyway... I saw them struggle with stuff up in age, which basically came from the absence of their father. This is the post that I made. Here it is. I said, without some purposeful and intentional work, you will become your absent or abusive father. Now, let me explain what an absent father is. That's just not a father that just ain't in your life, but an absent father can actually be in the house and, be, and not be present. So an absent father or an abusive father, and actually the absence of your father, whether that is physically or because he's not emotionally present in the home, all of that can be abusive. Okay, so you can become your absent or abusive father if you don't put some serious intention to work in. Father fractures injure the soul, giving way to daddy's devil. What's a daddy devil? Any addiction, any behavior, loop, thought pattern, um, whatever it is that daddy probably turned to instead of you, or you saw your father um, succumb to something that was a devil in his life, a darkness or an evil. Remove the D, evil. Daddy's evil is daddy's devil. There is a high probability that you will manifest the devils of your daddy when fractures aren't healed. It's not enough to do better. I hear a whole lot of people, especially those that are about my age and younger, say, man, I'm going to do a whole lot better than what my daddy did. I'm going to do better. I, and I get my son stuff. I spend time with my son. And, they, and I pay. I send the money for my son. I'm going to do better. That ain't better. That isn't always better. It may be better than what your daddy did, but it's not better in the sense of what is the best for your child. It's not enough to do better than he did. You need to be better than he was. Get books, 
find mentorship, get a therapist, and open your heart to love to begin the journey of healing. And I put hashtag fatherlessness. Now, let me say this, because y'all want me out in them comment sections. Some of you, not all of you. You want me out in the comment section about the comment I made concerning love. Because let me tell y'all something. I, let me ask you a question, Nancy. In the, with the God perspective, what is the greatest power of God? The greatest power of, of God is love. Okay, so you already know the answer. I forgot I pastored you. So most, most people, they, they go a whole other direction. But the greatest power in the earth is love. And it has the most healing, rehabilitative, recovery elements and aspects to it than any of God's powers. Okay, y'all type in here, God has powers. Because I don't think we're used to having this kind of conversation or, or, or saying it like that because uh, most of us was raised religiously and, and more religious than spiritual, so we don't understand, you know, certain statements or phrasing we would never put together as it relates to God. God has powers. There are many powers that God has. And his greatest power is love. And when someone experiences love, it heals them. Can, can I just say that? When some, I'm not talking about the kind of love that, 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 that you feel in your crotch. But I'm talking about the kind of love that fills up your that, that chest. I'm talking about the kind of love that controls that thought. To where that thought is looping, looping. Have you, have you ever been in love in such a way to where it just, it just it keep a song in your heart? And when you go to bed, you're thinking about that person. When you wake up, you're thinking about that person. I mean, there's certain little things that said and done, certain smells, and you just, you just all the way tied up in the old love thing. Well, when that is proper, because there's a way for, <laughs> there is a whole experience, <laughs> like I just explained, that has everything to do with lust, everything to do with some kind of pain body that you meet in another person. Your pain body match their pain body, and y'all just feel like y'all in love, or actually, your pains match, your traumas match, your toxicity matches. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about over here when you have a real good showing up blood that's just like Jesus. That unconditional. Ooh, that thing, when love heals alongside of books, therapy, mentorship. And that is what I was talking about. And I was talking to the person that probably did have an absent father, talking to the person who probably did have an abusive father, and trying to just make a post to try to help y'all niggas out. And then I make that post, and then y'all got so much to do and say. I said, why do I? I don't understand. Y'all let me see right now that y'all definitely got some father fractures or some or been marred by mom. You got some stuff that ain't been healed. Oh my God. All right, let me see what y'all saying. All right. I think since most of y'all is with me. Most of y'all is with me. Okay. All right. I just had to deal with that little piece of y'all talking sideways. All right, next to the next post. Oh, oh, what, just go to the next, whichever next one you want to go to, hold on. Oh, go to Little Nas. All right, here we go, here we go. Little Nas X, we were first, well, actually, y'all was probably first introduced to Little Nas X when it came to, what's the downtown road? Country and and World Road, road in the country. Something. And it was really big, I never heard one lyric of it, at, at dirt all. But then the song that really went everywhere, wherever I was introduced to this dude, was Montero X, right? I think that's the name of the song. But anyway, the video he released first, which was very smart to do because it got everybody talking, good, bad, and ugly. And he was dressed scantily, and one minute he looked like a woman, another minute he looked like a man, then another minute he looked like both of them at the same darn time. And he basically done a stripper pole down into hell, and he danced in the devil's lap, giving him a lap dance. Okay. I made a post concerning this way back when, and the first thing I said was, 
I talked about the brilliance of the marketing. I talked about the brilliance of um, how he was playing on the climate because right now it's, it's the left against the right. It's the conservatives against the more liberals. And so he really sent a shockwave to where some people were just totally floored. He became sermons for weeks. He became sermon. Every Christian YouTuber, vlogger was talking about him and really giving him the business. It was extremely smart because it just shot everything through the roof, his views, his streams. And then he'd done some shoes that allegedly had the um, human blood in them. And that was really interesting. And I praise his marketing, but then I begin to say, playing with these dark energies and things of this negative energies is not smart, and he can end up with a breakdown, battling suicide, or things, because he already done say he was battling suicide once sometime back. And this should just not be good. So, the next song he released was on last week. What is Monday? So, no, this was like Friday. So, Friday he released the song. And this song, I can't remember the name of it, but this is what I posted. I said, Lil Nas X blew the internet up with his last single with what many found to be very dark video. But his latest release didn't have not one cuss word, one illicit sexual innuendo, or anything gross. This song that I found to be about life's mental and emotional struggles that can make you contemplate giving up or suicide to be superb. I see the video ending on a positive note in a way that can make many feel like choosing life and fighting through isolation and loneliness. And then I gave you the link where you can go and listen to the song and also Google the lyrics. Now, let me say this. I saw uh, LBGTQAI plus um, com um, commentator talking about this, and he related it to struggles with your sexuality. I saw somebody that was not a part of that community, and he just, he equated to divorce. So when art is done right, everybody that experiences that art can connect with it in their own unique way. You can like or hate Lil Nas. I'm not a fan. I don't know his music. I only know the last one he did and this particular song, and I just listen to it. I don't really, I don't know the words. That's not something I listen to over and over. I'm not a, I wouldn't be considered a fan. But when art is done right, everybody can find themselves in it. And this particular song, in my opinion, was done right. Called Sun Goes Down. Called Sun Goes Down. Okay, yeah. I feel like it was done proper because it was totally positive. I had so many people in the comment section that then didn't have the conversation about what I was posting about, but went ahead and had a conversation about me posting it. This is what they said, Nancy. Oh, Lord. They said that I was in support of someone who has clearly been turned over to the devil and someone who is on their way to hell. And I should not be making a post like this, spreading it to those that are on my platform. Okay, let me say this because I think there's some kind of misconception somewhere. This platform is to make you laugh. And this platform, we discuss every darn thing that's going on in our world. We discuss everything that is happening everywhere. That's what we do here. This is not a platform that's supposed to fit your fancy and agree with everything that you feel in your heart. We all come over here to have the conversation session absolutely. lutely. And we will disagree. Don't y'all try to make this platform a church? If you want to see what I'm saying to, to, to the ministry and those that are members, then you meet me on Sunday morning over there in Patreon for prayer and prophecy. But here on Larry Live, we discuss everything and we do it without bias and judgment most of the time. 
Sometimes my, my own personal feelings um, flop up in here like this, yeah. But we discuss it all. And the reason why I discuss it all is so that everybody can at least develop the habit of being able to have a discussion about something that you may not have an understanding about. You may not even really respect or like that much, but you're at least able to sit down, stay tuned in, and have the conversation respectfully like a human being. I don't know what the hell be wrong with y'all. I be like, who in the world raised y'all? And then y'all having the third time out y'all saved. No, you not. Because my Jesus, according to the scripture, who? My Jesus, according to the scripture, he went down there and he sat down there and taught and done some everything with a whole lot of different kind of people. He maybe didn't participate. He didn't run them up one side, down the other, and say, you fine, just like you is. You ain't got to, you know, educate yourself, grow, and mature, or let go, stop doing the things that are sinful. He didn't say that. But he loved them and sat down there with them. And then that good God of mine, that Pastor Paul, he said, look, I know how to get with y'all. Y'all may be, I can get with y'all just to win you and influence you positively. Y'all in that comment section, I don't know where y'all come from. Y'all none of mine. Y'all come from somebody else's platform. I need you to go somewhere else. Or either when you come over here, you're going to sit down and have a conversation and act like you got some home training. Fussing that the folk to come in here just to have a conversation. You're going to scare folk away with your crazy mint. <sighs> I just can't. All right, let's go on to the next topic. Why are we keeping it pretty spiritual? Bring that barefoot prophet over here because I made that post this week too. Y'all worry me with this. I made this post. I said the elder, the prophet elder Claiborne Martin. He will walk around barefoot prophesying that God is in us and he is not dwelling in church buildings. I need for all of you guys to type, the true church has left the building. Even if you don't believe it, just type it out. The true church has left the building. This is something that I began to, to, I began to tout in 2015. And I began to tell all these pastors and preachers, you need to begin to build online because the true apostolic church have now been released into the world, into their gift, into their careers, being a shining example of Jesus Christ. That was what this platform started talking about in 2015. That was the only thing I talked about in the beginning. Um, after, well, Leandria inspired for the platform to start the conversation. But when I started the shows, that was all that we were talking about, mainly, until the politics and stuff with Hillary Clinton stuff popped off, and then we went into the current whatever was happening. Kim Barrell cussed all the LBGT community out. Not really cussed, but you know what I'm saying. Then we began to go a different direction. But when this platform started, this is what I was discussing. The, <coughs> the true church has left the building. Everybody type it in there. The true church has left the building. Let me explain what I mean. But let me finish reading what it said. Um, Barefoot prophet prophets on God is in us and he is not the one in church. But in 2015, I began saying the same, encouraging cyber churches and spoke of church changing forever in 2020. I didn't know about prophet Martin until today. I just found, found this about three or four days ago. Could COVID-19 been the voice of God reminding us of this truth? Had church buildings become idols? Now, let me explain my statement. The true church has left the building. Are y'all typing that everywhere? I need everybody to type it. And I still need um, those of you guys over there on Facebook to share and to hit like. Thank you for the 380 people that have hit like and the 99 people that have shared on Facebook. Thank you for those of you on YouTube that have hit like and shared. I need for you to keep on doing it so we can break and bust through this ceiling that I'm seeing here. Okay. All right, all together about 2,000 of us watching, but it should be around three or 4,000 of us watching. So I know there's a shadow band somewhere. All right? All right, so let me explain this statement. The true church has left the building. <sighs> I'm so tired of talking about this. I've been talking about this since 2015. Why well, I always got to explain myself. When I say that the true church has left the building, I'm talking about 
those of us that is coasting with the spirit of change, that is God, Jesus authored, that hit the land many moons ago. Now, a lot of people are catching up with this now due to the Korah and even considering it now due to the Cora. Some of the rest of you are actually building your beautiful church buildings to get everybody to come back in there. If you want to do that, fine. I'm not even going to say that you're wrong. But what I am saying is that the true church has left the building, meaning the true follower of Jesus Christ and the true spiritual organ in the church has in consciousness and also in intent and in scope and view has left that box of sameness have left that limitation and no longer have their spirituality tied to the four walls of the church building. Their spirituality now is connected to God in Christ Jesus. And as a result, they see the world beyond the four walls of the church, as the place where they need to do their evangelism. It's the place they need to go and be a light. It is the place that they need to go and be a positive influence, using their gifting, their talent, whether they went to school to cultivate one or whatever, but being a minister as a doctor, being a minister as a comedian, being a minister as a, as, what do you call cosmetologist or hairdresser? I forget, you know, I'm 43, so the words are different now. Being a minister as a judge, as a lawyer, as a factory worker, as some professional. And they had like, I was, I was, and like, I was talking out the side of my neck, but I knew what the Lord had told me. I know that. And now here we are. We're now, and I was encouraging them to go cyber, build cyber. I've done a whole article about the cyber church, and I talked about the, the person that is a professional, but is a prophet, a prophet in certain industries, a prophet in entertainment. And there are many prophets in entertainment. I, yeah, I'm going to say some stuff y'all not going to like, because y'all just ain't been looking at it right. Look at the work of Tyler Perry. Lord, let me, let me just, this is not, let me get to the other stuff. This is the work of a prophet. Look at the work of Devon Franklin. You got to know the stories, you guys. You got to know what they believe and their intent and motive. This is the work of prophets. But the way we were raised, that we, you couldn't be saved and in Hollywood. You couldn't be saved and be an actor. Because you may have to lie. You that lie. You might have to say a cuss word. And that's sin. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And because people now, because of education and the things that have happened in the world, now no longer have their consciousness tied to that the limitations of the four walls and what they say and how it's supposed to be. Now they're seeing the world as a space that they can go and create their pulpit from which they preach Jesus. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking good right through there, ain't I? Or put the cash app up. Somebody, they ain't been to church. They got all God's offering and taking it out there to, because of um, COVID done, them backed off a little piece and they listen to what they're saying and so they're going out there doing different stuff. Cash app. I'm talking good. Dollar sign. Dollar sign. MBN Network. Right now. $8.88. Right now. If you want to. $8.88. Let me get back to what I'm saying. Oh, Lord, I mercy Jesus. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to the next thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to the next thing. Good. On this week, we had something very sad to happen. And I had already known that she was sick. And her name is Evangelist Joyce Rogers. And I want to talk about her death 
I do not like discussing death on the platform. I only like doing the post. But I need to discuss it. But before I discuss it, Key Arashid wants to invite you to something that is going to be happening really, really soon, and you can attend it online. And so I'm going to let her invite you concerning this, and I'll be right back to talk about the rest of the topic. Welcome to Ecclesia Global Virtual Conference with host pastor, Dr. Diana the Deal Breaker with national recording artist, Kiara Sheard. Hello everyone, it's Kiara Sheard and I am so excited about being with you for the Ecclesia Conference on June 24th through the 26th. Don't miss it, I'll be there with Dr. Diana the Deal Breaker. It's gonna be a tremendous worship experience, so mark your calendar, I can't wait. Register now at Ecclesia Global Conference. June 24th through 26th, Ecclesia Global Conference 2021. You don't want to miss a mighty move of God. Register today. All right, so make sure that you are set to attend Ecclesia Global. It has been sponsored by Dr. Diana, and it's important that you go. There's going to be so many different people there, Roland Martin. There's going to be Kara Sheard. Also, there will be Leandria. I can't think of the other guy's name. What Eric is his name? Thomas. Eric Thomas is going to be there. And one more person. And one more person. What's the name? I can't think of the other person's name. But you... Sophia Ruffin. Sophia Ruffin. She was that was a lesbian, but now she's saved, got a boyfriend, and she's preaching all over everywhere. So they're going to be sharing some very intricate detail. This is going to be an intimate experience. And this link that I just put in there on YouTube, please, um, all of our moderators, whenever we play this video, copy this link and put it in there so that people can hit it and go ahead and book their tickets so they can have this exclusive, exclusive, intimate experience that Dr. Diane is doing. And for those of you that want to, at any point of the day, you feel like you need to hear from God, you can always go over there to Zoe Ministries, my mentor, Bishop Bernard Jordan, 24 hours of the day. You can call this line, screenshot it right now, 515-604-9266. You go over there, hear teaching, you hear prayer, and I don't care if you are listening, and you give them a dollar, they're going to call you like it was one million and they're going to begin to prophesy and give you the word of the Lord. All right. All right, let's go for it. Now, let me tell y'all something. I do not like discussing death on the platform. Now, I used to just, when I first got into this, I would post up anything. There have been, there's so much stuff I pass on now. There's so many stories that hit all the time, and, and you probably don't even know about it because I'm not mentioning it mentioning it or um and even some of your your favorite youtubers and content creators and commentators they're not doing these stories i mean because it gets overbearing and then at the same time some of these stories is it just puts you in the middle of some stuff you don't want to be in and you become a target, and you don't want to just go go into that. And and I don't have to do that right now. And I told y'all the other week, I don't even have to do Larry Live anymore because my subscriber base has built so strong. We're able to just really focus on that. But I do it for the community and for the sake of making you laugh and having a great time. Um, but there's been a death, and it happened in the church world now. The Colgate Church is like the name brand church, and everybody else's church is off brand. Let me put it like that. I'm apostolic. The apostolics are big, but we ain't got like no big, huge. We split off into 159 different parts because we can't agree about women preachers, about earrings, makeup. You know, we all baptize in Jesus' name, but some say you baptize in Jesus' name, you go to heaven. Some say you baptize in Jesus' name, you, you, um, um, and if you don't dip proper, then you ain't right. It's just a whole lot of stuff. So we, we mixed all up and throwing a stroll everywhere. I never about believe if we all got together, we would give the coaches a run for their money. But we can't stick the apostolics. We just can't. We just, we just, we just too, we got too many things that divide us. But the culture church is like the name brand black Pentecostal church. It's the it. Everybody else come behind that. 
Now, so when somebody die, do something well, great, wonderful in that body, we all know about, even if we're not cogent and not cogent lovers. Well, this particular one man, her name is Evangelist Joyce Watt Rogers. I don't know one sermon that she's preached or song she has sang or what she's known for, but I knew her name. Why? Because of Gilbert Earl Patterson's show that used to come on BET right before Bobby Jones or after Bobby Jones. Well, I have no idea. I can't. You don't have no idea? Hmm. Wait a minute. Is you blacking in the church? <laughs> yeah. How in the world you don't know? How in the whole... Well, it, and, and so that's, I remember sitting up there with this ponytails and glasses on a white shirt. I said, why is this woman dressed like this in this pulpit? So I remember seeing her there. I do not know her ministry at all, but I know her name because Gibber Earl Patterson, them and Louise, they love her ministry. So they will always put her up. So I will always see her up there. So when she died, I knew, I said, Oh, boy, this is another hit for them because the culture church, they them had hundreds of people to die in leadership since 2020. I mean, the whole general boy, half it cut down the middle done died. You know, so they've experienced the whole lot of death with an F. So when I saw them, I'm like, damn. And I knew her condition, so I knew there were about to be an announcement of her passing. So I waited, having a connection in the family. I waited. I said, do, do y'all see it anywhere online? Because in my business, you want to be first. Now, a whole lot of y'all hoes, y'all just want to post it online and be first. And it ain't even your darn job. Ain't nobody going to pay you. You're not going to make no money for clicks, for likes, for engagement, or nothing. They don't lead to no money for you. But because you just a hungry hoe and want to be the first person to put everything up and so everybody like, you just, you just connected. Y'all be wanting to put, but it's my job and it's important for me to not be first, but to be one of the first outlets to commentate or to notify about it. Because this platform, we're never first with anything because we are commentary. So it's already been reported by somebody somewhere else before we get it. And that's our rule here. I don't care how sweet it is and how many views it will get. If it don't line up with it got to be somewhere else first, it ain't coming over here. It has to be online somewhere. And so I saw her death online in the comment section of another no-name post. And then they, in that comment section, I was seeing where the source was coming from. Ladies and gentlemen, the source of her death announcement was coming from, and I don't hate this man, but I just cannot just say it the way that I say it, like I've been saying, I don't hate him. But that raggedy Bishop Brandon Porter, and let me say why he raggedy for, because I'm, when it comes to, I watch how he moved because this is, I only know him because of my job. Y'all do not know that's the problem with that. Because if I know you because of my job, that means you connected to some bullshit. That's what it means. And there have been so many stories and so many rabbit holes that I done went down. And next thing you know, Bishop Brandon Porter said, or they go to Bishop Brandon Porter Church, or Bishop Brandon, it was too many times. That's how come I know the man's name. I wouldn't even know his name because I'm not from the name brand culture church. I'm apostolic. That's the only reason why I know who he is. So every time I turn around, Bishop Brandon, Bishop Brandon. And so then I begin to, I think I friended him on one of my pages or uh, followed him so I can see what he posts because this man had the tea better than any other outlet out there. If it was going on in the church, this man was going to put it out there. Y'all remember doing that election? In the election, he'll put it out there. he put stuff out there. Then the other man had to come out there. Bishop Charles Blake himself had to come out there and say, we do not. 
operate like this in the culture church and we're going to have an election and we're going to redo that was his fault I wouldn't even know it was Brandon so this person that was in the comment section saying that evangelist George Rogers had been gave up the ghost and went on with the glory they quoted Bishop Brandon Porter. He said, Lord, we can't take it no more. Lord, here we go again. Lord, pray for us. Jesus is so bad. Y'all know how the church mothers do. The church mothers gossip like that. Y'all talk about me, but this is what the church gossip. Like, Lord, have mercy. You pr pray for, pray for Billy now. Why? What's wrong? That's just the start. <laughs> the whole gossiping conversation. <laughs> You know what done happened in the family. You call over there to mine. Hey, the church mother. Hey, girl, how, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Mother Joan. Mm -hmm. I would do just on my spirit. I was wanting to see how you doing. I was just wondering. Now, the mother done already know what done happened, and she's just setting it up to have the conversation. <laughs> That's why Bishop Brandon Porter was taught by the church mothers. He went over there and he said, he talking about, Lord, have mercy. Jesus, Lord, we just died. We just can't take. Now, mind you, you done posted and everybody and their mama and their daddy and their pepper had already done posted about evangelist George Rogers being sick. The whole daddy Jakes, the daddy Jakes, that's Thomas Dexter, and then they baby Jakes, and that is John Green. They both shaped just like. The whole bishop daddy Thomas Dexter uh, Woodrow Jakes had said and made a post about this here woman. Now, when you got Thomas Dexter saying your name, Thomas Dexter's putting a post out there and talking about, we need for the church to pray and, and we're going to believe God that God is going to do something in her life. And when it comes to evangelists, Joyce Rogers, and we just know that when she's going to bring the word that you're going to get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for, for, for what she's going to bring is going to be so magnificent. So when Thomas gets the posting about you, you done made it. And it got to be M. Durham Porter to him. And when he posted about pray for her, at that moment, all y'all ought to know that it was serious. Because he's just not going to do that. Thomas Dexter has managed to keep his nose clean in the bodies of the Christ out here in, in, in y'all world anyway. In the bodies of the Christ for a long, 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 long time. You're going to find rumors or whatever, but ain't nothing substantiated. It's just rumors. You know, the rumors can go on so long that now the rumors are the proof because everybody know the same rumors. Oh, it must be true. You know, yeah, you would have heard that too. No, it's just a rumor. That's all, that's all it is. There's nothing been substantiated on Bishop Thomas Jenks ever. So he move a certain kind of way. He going to keep that nose clean. So if he posting, that's serious. Evangelist Joyce Rogers. I seen that. I said, wait, I remember up in G. E. Patterson. And then my contact and the family was like, mm, it's not good. If I would put it into words, it was almost like it, they, at that moment it was dire. Um, and I was like, oh, the Koja church about to get hit up during him. You know. So after I seen it in the comment section, Realize it was Bishop Brandon Porter that really had thrown it out there. Dog whistle. I began to look and look and look and look. And then somebody hit me up saying, we're about to post it on this particular page. Um, yeah, it's, it's okay to be said. The family knows now. Because allegedly, it's alleged, Bishop Brandon Porter posted it before the family knew. Let me say it one more time. Allegedly, general board member, this is your leadership now. General board member allegedly had posted it before the family even knowed anything about it. 
Y'all here like his share. And now as a result, they were popping off in that comment center. All over in Facebook, popping off. How in the world are you going to do this? And so once I seen it posted legit, in a legit way, then I posted it. My post was, beloved of the Church of God in Christ, newly appointed supervisor, Evangelist George Rogers has passed away. Pray for her family and entire cogent as they mourn. I did not know of her ministry because I did know of her ministry because of the late G.E. Patterson airing her preaching. She was cogent to the bone. If you wanted to meet somebody and say, what's the representation of a woman in the church? She was it. And I knew this. So I posted it on the business side because I knew it was going to be a lot of activity surrounding this on social media. And I need my numbers to stay high. This is business. Business. So I said, as soon as I see this, I'm going to post this. So I keep my engagement up with Facebook. I'm monetized on, on Facebook. So all of my engagement, although I'm not making money off of this post directly, posts like this with lots of activity, it helps me to ultimately make money in another area. So on Facebook, I'm, I have two monetized platforms on Facebook. And then I said in the post what was real. I'm not going to put up here, pray, pray for her. Oh, it's so, it's so serious that, you know, and, and not mean that. I mean, because I do love people. And then I explained where I knew her from. So I had to tell some of y'all ragged mother that was in my comment section that I wanted to cuss out because some things are cuss worthy. And that was, I almost opened up the reading room on one of y'all that I helped. But I said, you know, I'm going to let that be because you're protecting your culture church. But heifer, I want you to know that I liked it to went live and cuss you and your entire family out. That's what I almost did. But I'm so saved. I'm paper Bible. I am paper Bible saved. I am. And had it not been for the Lord that was on your side, must have been, I would have cussed you. But I did not, and I want to bring up no drama around this right here. But don't try me. Try me not. Because God gave me the last name, Reed, and I kind on the spare of a moment. Just God just give me stuff to say to this dragon. I feel like it's him. I feel like it's him. That give it to me to read you. You know, that's what he made my last name for. But um, let me do my job. You go sit down and do your job of nothing. All right. So that's we through with that. Yeah, they remember that song. I am paper Bible saved. I am paper Bible saved from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I am paper Bible saved. Hallelujah. All right, let, let, me, let me talk about this right here. Oh, let me talk about this. Then I'm going to do a break and come back and talk about Matthew Stevenson and who was it? Jamal Bryan. But do not, the way that I'm going to discuss this, do y'all make it, don't make it be something that ain't. We done been over there talking about it in Patreon. And, you know, it is what it is. Cheering. I went to Orlando, took my staff, a part of my staff, the first leg of the staff calls. When stuff started popping off with the, and starting the church last year, I had to pull on some people that was in my church before and happened to still be in my life and put them on staff to help me handle everything. So that first leg, when that happened in early 2020, I took with them me to Orlando. We have a conference, a three-day conference that is coming up. Um, and it's just for my patrons. If you want to come on the Sunday morning, which is free entry, everything else you got to pay a, a nice coin to get into. But that Sunday morning, you can just come in as long as you're a patron. So this is the reason why it's important for you to take tonight and sign up and become a patron. Because if you are a patron and you remain a, a patron from now through July, you will be able to come into right here in Atlanta at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta Sunday morning at July the 18th. You meet me there. It's going to be me and um, uh, my mentor and some other people. We're all wearing white. We're doing what we do every Sunday, prayer, but we have a musical guest, and that Sunday morning our musical guest is Kurt Carr and all of the Kurt Carr singers. 
So you can come to that, but you got to be a patron in order to do it. Um, I don't know why I said all that. I was, what was I saying before that? Uh, you were going to talk about something and go to a break. Uh, no, it won't that match. You won't even listen. You don't even know what I was saying. Uh, but anyway, I was saying something about that. What was it? Lisa saying you won't be able to get by me without registration. You have to. Re- First of all, you have to be a patron. Then when you get over that Patreon, there's a registration link. You have to register in order to be able to come in there on that Sunday morning. Originally, I was only um, doing a, a few, couple of hundred of my patrons. But if you're a patron, in, you can come there on Sunday morning. You can get in. All right. Um, what was I saying? Well, let me go ahead and talk about the next thing. Then I'm going to go to a break and come back and talk about Matthew Stevens. And, um, T.S. Madison made a post about Matthew Stevens, and as a result, it made some people go off online. There was a Darrell, a Daryl J. Daryl, D A R E L L J Hunt, made a post. I want to talk about his post um, and some other comments that I saw surrounding this. And we talked about this in Patreon. But before I get to that, children, I went to Orlando. Here I go. I remember. I was in Orlando, took the staff, and so working out details for the event that's coming out in July. And we came back. When were we come at? Friday? Mm-hmm. And f- for some reason, my TV fell on TLC. I ain't never turned to TLC before. I don't know how it happened. But every time, if I won't watch a Netflix or if I won't it, it will always settle on TLC, and I couldn't understand what in the whole hell in the heaven was happening. Well, on today, um, I watched one show, something about a four bride people trying to do competition to get a trip to go on the honeymoon. That made me, I watched that, I'm like, this is sort of interesting. Then I seen Return to Amish. Now, I remember I used to go preach in Coatesville, Pennsylvania every year for Bishop Bobby Duncan and Apostle Frank Fullwood. Sometimes I would do it at the same time. And I would go to the prophetic conference. And, you know, and I remember going in Coltsville, Pennsylvania. We'll always go through Amish country in Pennsylvania. They out there with a the horse buggy. They don't have no running water, no electricity, nothing. They beers right long. And if you happen to stop and go to the store near some of them, they smell a certain kind of way. They're really not known for being very hygienic. Now, this is all me presuming. And I hope I'm not offending anybody, but that's how us who ain't Amish view you guys. So when it comes to their hygiene and sometimes their dental... (laughs) Oh, my God. Lord, keep the chunks from coming up. And sometimes when it comes to their dental hygiene, it don't be right in their teeth. Their mouth be towed down. And so... (laughs) <laughs> I got me. I might have to get a mint. My stomach was towed up. I made this post a few minutes ago, and in this post I said, and I was trying my best not to offend nobody, but I had to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God, I was serious as a heart attack. I prayed as I sought them from that TV because they had introduced this character, this little boy. And he was having a whole conversation, but his mouth didn't move. His teeth just sat upon his lower lip. And he was talking about only how he, he talked the whole time, but his, it was like that. And I prayed. I said that. I said, Lord, don't let this woman fall into this trap and kiss this boy. And she not only kissed him once, but she kissed him twice times. I said, good Google a moon. And so I shared a video of my real reaction. And I'm going to share it right now for you to watch the video and you're going to hear exactly what I had to say as I watched. This is in real time. Kendall is my witness. I watched it for the first time and I was recording this for like five or six months reacting to the whole segment once I seen his teeth. <laughs> and as I kept recording something said this is about to be a kissing that's going to happen. And I said no, no, no it ain't. But in my spiritualizations, some say, yes, it is. I'm like, no, it ain't. She ain't going to do this. Look at her mouth ain't bad. She got to see his mouth. 
I said, I know good team world. This girl's not about to do this. This is the no, she not. Women are smarter than us. There ain't nothing that he can do to make her put her mouth on his mouth. I just knew that wasn't going to happen. I kept recording. I'm glad I did because it captured my real emotion as I watched this. Let's watch it together. You can hear my commentary. Do not. Jesus. <gasps> Don't you put your mouth on his mouth. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Do not put your mouth on his mouth. Do not put your mouth on his mouth. Oh, God, to mighty. No, she can do it. She can do it. She can do it. Oh, Jesus. Lord, cover her. Cover in your blood, Lord. Cover her whole mouth because she do her lips. is gone. And they're holding her face. She don't see his mouth. Her so mouth is gone. She about to do it. She about to do it. She gonna do it. I can look at her too. She gonna do it. My heart starts racing because I've never been kissed before. You never been that right now. That, that's gonna be a bite. There ain't gonna be no kiss. Lord! I bet you did. And I felt like there was nothing else in the world. Like, <laughs> were, it was like, I don't know. Oh, uh, no, I that wasn't no kids. That was a bite. Happening, you got me. Like, I was so happy, and mm. I was surprised mm. that it finally happened. Oh, my Lord. Did nobody tell him, oh, you don't care. For those of you whose stomach was not bothered, I'm concerned about your oral hygiene. There is no way up under, never. The teeth can hang out, but they ain't. They can be washed. Them teeth not washed. They are not. And I don't know if they ever can be put up and well, washed and put up. Like they got to be washed and sit outdoors. And but although it's sitting out, outside the house, they can they can be scrubbed. Amish. What the hell Amish got to do with it? You. They something you can do. I don't care don't you tell me nothing. They something that can be done as they sit out there outdoors out, out, out like that all the time. I, I don't know. That's, that's, I just cannot. I, I was so done. That's when I turned my TV. <laughs> you know it's enough TLC today. Oh, my God. So what in the world? <laughs> it's horrible. There ain't that much love in the world. I just don't know. Mm-mm. Ooh. And I, he bold. And then they went over there and pl- took each other's tongue and done it like that. At that point, I said, they is going to be frucking. Cause all the time you doing it, you they both freaks. They ain't done, they ain't had no Amish sex. Oh, damn. Oh my God. Somebody sent me a clip where she asked her sister why the next morning she was itching and burning. I said he ate her out. That's what it is. 
they ain't no way up under because there was she was thinking that probably was a, a sexual transmitted diseases from 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 peeing to puss. Mm -mm, no, mm -mm. I looked at that mouth and I know it came from there. He went down there, ate her out, and put all of what was in his mouth. If all of them, what I believe to be diseases and funguses and wrapped up in funk and put that down in her soft middle part and her puss was like what in the whole hell and the heaven has happened to me I have been socked on fire <laughs> or he went down there to eat her out and he gnawed her them ripped her clitoris to pure just it's just chopped meat down there now because them choppers. <laughs> oh my God, he's a piranha! <laughs> he's a piranha! Oh my God. Let's pray for her. Father God in Jesus' name, God of the Amish. I'm going to ask you to go down there in her crotch and repair the damage that was done to her soft middle part. Heal it up, Lord. <laughs> Heal it up for I'm going to ask you right now. Every rip, every tear, every contusion, Father, I ask that you will heal without scabbing. Lord, do it right now in the soft middle part. Go through there. Go through there, him. Go through there. And burnt up every fungus, every disease that was placed down there at that boy mouth that's always outdoors and outside the house and ain't never inside. <laughs> help her! Help her, Lord, help! Ooh, I can imagine the pain and the itch. Lord, mm. amen, man, amen, and a woman. All right, um, now I got the distance because we is not laughing at nobody when we do these next two segments, and we're not going to cuss. What now? <clears throat> what you saying? You got the marriage one. The marriage one? The woman proposing. Oh. <gasps> Wait a minute, let me discuss one more before I go to the break and then come back with Matthew Stevenson and um and uh what's his boy's name? J Maul. Did y'all see this here? Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I think about this. Look at here. Now this this is a like I said last week when I talked about Billy Porter, who can sing? I heard something that he sung that gospel legend Kurt Carr arranged for Pose. I thought he can sing. This bro can really sing. I'm going to send y'all the link. Um, let me see if I can put the link in the chat. This bro, let me let y'all hear this. Take that down, Nancy. See, I'm doing something else. Um, hold on, I'm going to get to that. Y'all give me about 15 more minutes. The show going to be over. Um, where is this at? 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 Hit like, hit share. Um... Okay, I'm going to put this link here. I'm not going to play it because I want them to fool it up with my man. But I want y'all to, when y'all get time, to go and watch this Billy Porter. Because I know what he can sing, but I'm like, mm. I mean, you know. But this man, when he sung this right here, I just put it in there. They'll come up. I'm about to put it in the um in YouTube too. I said this, he's saying this like, he, he sung and, and gave a testimony about, you know, he may be sick in his body. You know, he announced, he told his HIV status. He said, I may be sick in my body, but God going to help. I, I was, whoo, I felt that thing go through me. I said, you better sing this, this song. I'm trying to tell y'all, you better go back. And watch Billy Porter. All right. Let me get past that now. All right. Now get to this woman here. This woman, Lord have mercy. I, I told y'all last week we got a lot of stuff we got to get used to. When I say we got to get used to it, 
I'm not saying we got to agree to it and we got to validate and verify it and say, oh, this is what is and this is right or whatever. I'm not saying that because you can continue to believe how you believe, but you got you got to get better than what you, because your respect level ain't proper. You turn your nose at folk. You got to quit all that bull. All right, bring this over. So this is one of the things that we got to get used to because it's sort of catching on. If my daughter ever do anything like this, I'm going to hit her in her throat hard as I possibly can. And there's so much to get used to. How y'all feel about women asking men to marry them? Ladies, would you do that? Bro, what do you think? Let's play this video so y'all can see what happened. I don't know why you got to do this Let's view that one more time because it's really short. All right, let's watch. <laughs> All right, um, this is um, this is something that is happening in our world um, where women are beginning to ask men to marry them. I can't get with it. Um, however, I do understand that women want to take control of their life. I know that women want to um, really say, you know, I don't want to be out here dating and dating and dating. I want to get serious and I want to get married and I want to have a family. And if I feel like that he fits the mold and he has potential, then I'm willing to marry the potential that I see um, and devote to it and walk us all the way to my dream is fulfilled. So I do understand that. I, I get it. I do understand that. But for me, I may be old school. Um, I may be just used to a certain thing. But whatever it is, I don't mind sharing that. My daughter will do this. I pop her in her throat and slap her in the back of her neck and ask her, what is wrong with you? Um, because I feel like this could lead to a lot of men lying to a lot of women because I'm going to tell you what the truth is, you guys. We really not into marriage like that. That's, that's what the females are into marriage. We are into someone serving and meeting our need and giving us what we want. If that makes us like children, little boys, or a dog, however you want to put it, I'm going to tell you what truth is. That's what we want. And some of us can devote and commit to the person that has given us what we want. Um, a lot of us, I'm going to say quite a few of us can. We can. We can um, commit to the female that has given us what everything that we want. You give us what we want, we're going to give you what you want. If you want to get married, fine, we get married. If you want to go buy a house, fine, we, we, we're going to buy a house. You know, if you want to have some children, I'm fine. I'll take care of my, I'll take care of the children. And then somewhere down the road, the man falls in love. And, and, and that still may not look the way it looked for our lady, <clears throat> but eventually we fall in love. And these other things will begin to form in the tie and in the attachment. But that ain't how we made up. And I know some of the men in the comments, some of the women in the comments not going to like what I say, but we just ain't into that like that. But once you, if you are a lady that give us what we want and you make us feel a certain kind of way and you let us be who we are, and that works for you, with you, you really like us being who we are, and you don't give us no flack, and you let us be, and you still giving us what we want, we're going to give you whatever you want. As long as we can continue to do what it is that we want to do. Now, don't be asking us, because this is what happens. Don't be asking us to do A, B, C, and D, and you are not giving us what we want. Because... We're going to go get what we want 
somewhere else. And you need to hope that we don't make a choice that's going to embarrass you or endanger your life. Because that's how we is. I hate to say it, but it is. Um, so asking us to marry you, you setting yourself up for failure. Either we're going to say, yeah, and then our behavior going to tell you no, or either we're going to say, nah, bro, what? No, man, I ain't doing that. And, if, and, and for me, it will feel um, emasculating. What, you, what, what about you, Nancy? Yeah, I mean, for me, if it's left up to me, I would say, I would have to say no. I'll propose. You say yes. Let me do it. So, you would say again. She'll get down on her knee. I'll say, "Will you please get up? <laughs> you're you're embarrassing me. Let me say. Let me get on my knee and propose to you. And you say yes. Leave okay. It, leave it at that the traditional way. <laughs> you said, "Will she get down on her knee?" You gonna say what? I'm gonna say, "Will you please get up?" <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> Will you please get up? You're embarrassing me. Okay. Will you please get up? Will you please get up? I just can't. I, I, I don't know what this is about. I don't try to judge nothing, you know, bias or... But that I know this. That's just not for me. That's not for me. I'm going to tell you no so fast. Yeah. Okay. At least you're gonna, she has a, a point of view on this. This is gonna be interesting. Okay. What? Tell me. Tell me what you think. First of all, giving on to God, who is the head of my life, <laughs> <laughs> and Him crucified. And Pentecost Sunday was on Sunday. Did not our hearts burn? Anyway, um, I think that was a whole bunch. Okay. Um. Because, I said this in the comment section, I feel like this is respectful. I say this respectfully, men. I feel like already men don't step up as it is. Okay. So now, it's like we're doing, if you're going to propose, if you're going to keep the house, if you're going to go to work, you're going to do the kids, you, mm. what they going to do? Okay. It's like you're taking away something from them that is supposed to be a special time for them when they do it. Mm -hmm. It's like you're taking away, you know, and it seems like you're making a statement that you are the man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you my little itch. Or whatever, you know, <laughs> especially if he said yes. I'll be surprised if he said yes. Mm, he might be. I seen it. If he if he was like, yes. <laughs> because ain't no way a real man. Oh for Lord. I'm just this is me. Okay. I cannot see myself proposing to a man because I like to be chased. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like for a man to let me know that he's interested in me and all this sort of, sort of things that's going on, whatever. I like to be chased. I don't like to be the chaser. Right. If I have to chase you, this is a hint for guys out there. If I have to chase you, you won't never talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> because I can go on through my day and not even, you know, I go out, go out throughout my day and, you know, I don't really be paying attention. But I just feel like that was just a whole... And all these people clapping in the background. Uh, and uh, uh. Like, this is something that... She looked like a whole... I ain't gonna say fool. But she looks like... It, it, was, it was disturbing. Yeah, one of, one of the things that I... I just... I don't... I try not to... Because we got 40... We, I went a different generation. So we think a certain kind of way. And so I'm trying to at least be open to the possibility that we're in a different day and things have changed and we just used to things being a certain kind of way and there really ain't nothing to it um, except for just what we feel. It just seemed like a whole nother level of desperation. Mm. Like, I want to keep you. I want to... And he's standing there like... <laughs> his response wasn't, oh my God, 
<laughs> That's body language. He was yeah. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I I don't know. And and I, I'm like you too. I was raised old tradition, mm -hmm. you know, old fashioned, you know, and all those things. But I just feel like certain things just need to be a certain way. Yeah. And I'm not even into, and, and I say this too, I'm, I'm not even into the whole engagement thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I understand. mean like a big, a big Making thing about it. Making it a big deal mm -hmm. and all this kind of, you slip me a ring on my finger, hey, we good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, it, it's just not a big thing for me like that. Like, it, it's like a whole lot of things that's going on out that these gender reveals, all this kind of, it's like all this stuff is coming out the blue. It's like, but you know, do you think it means those things, gender reveals, the engagement, the engagement party, do you think all those things are becoming so important now because the marriage don't mean much? So you, you get everything out of it that you're going to get out of it and enjoy, enjoy the ride. Yeah. Because you see on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, these We've seen these same characters get married two and three times with big, big, huge weddings and buy houses and big, huge trips, and then it does not last. Well, I don't watch Housewives of Atlanta. That's your show. Yeah, I watch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do see on like Love Hip Hop Atlanta, everybody's always cheating on each other. Yep. Um, well, at least Kirk and Rashida, they still together, but it's just been a whole lot of mess, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I feel like it's for show. I feel mm. like it mm. because I've never had a wedding. I've never um, the big, you know. So it's just not. It's I think you know. I I forgot all about that. We never had a wedding. No, never had. But it don't mean it. Well, it means something, but then it don't. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't know if it don't. Let me think. What you mean? Why didn't we have no wedding? I mean, I'm trying to think. Well, what was I don't it? know. Every time I think about wedding, my mind automatically goes to. Juanita Bynum and Weeks, and how big their wedding was. Oh, a million dollars, I think it was, or two million. And look where they at. You blinked and it was over. It was over. <laughs> <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> well, see, that's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe this the whole ride. Like, she ain't did it since then. He and mm -hmm. he had that one where he married Christina. Um, they still together. Glenn, they still together. You know, but it wasn't even that huge. Um, oh. I mean, go look at us. We ain't married, but we still and we're keeping our vows. What you mean keeping our vows? What you mean not keep? How what we're, you mean keeping our vows? The vow that you took in front of the, what's the face for better, for worse, and richer and in poorer, to death do us part in sickness and in health. We said that. Yeah, we said it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we said it. We said it twice. But why in the wedding vows they don't have nothing about sex in there? I mean, cause that's just a, a given. I'm thinking. I mean, but I'm just. But when it comes, I think that need to be said before God. <laughs> <laughs> it's done before God. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, those I'm talking about. We're keeping the vows for you. Have been there for me. I have been there for you since. Well, actually, before the wedding. Before I mean, before the marriage. Right. So I think that... You're just too deep. That's not deep, Lisa. We have been yeah. keeping our vow. Even, I mean, even, even everything you went through, everything I went through, we were always there even when we were with other people. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. And I remember when I, when I had came back, I don't want nobody to take this as nothing, but I remember... When I was coming back from our uh, first divorce, the Lord spoke to me and he said something about, I can't remember it verbatim now, but he said, if I told you to go back, and we wasn't married, to your husband, will you go? Yeah. yeah. And I said, I remember you told me that. Married? I remember you told me that. Yeah. And so um, that, that's a perspective that I always kept. That um that and what my dad always told me, um about you know stay out of his way, let him do it because he's gonna basically always take care of you. Just stay out of his way, let him do what he's supposed to do. My dad was always fussing at me about you. <laughs> I didn't understand that. I'd be like, I'm your child, uh, and you always try 
trying to tell me to be, he will always take your side. But I made a promise to your dad, and he, your dad knew me before I knew me as a child. My mama carrying him, so, and there were them services. So I think he knew something that maybe I did not know, you did not know. He knew that I was going to always do, because the way I was raised, he knew that I was going to always do what's right. I mean, because, yeah, he did do that. He was like that. And I think that's what it was. It had to be that. But yeah, proposing, no, not doing it. But I did a nice one. You did. You yeah. did. Mm -hmm. But that second one, you was a little flaky now. Because <laughs> you were talking about, I could just give you the ring that I had for Jennifer. I said, the devil is alive. Ah! You don't ah! give me somebody else's. But it's this many. I don't care if it's 10,000 carats. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> somebody asked us that how many times y'all got married well see this if you was watching reading things my way for the first 12 episodes n nothing you're hearing right now is that new um just a, just another perspective reading things my way go to reading r-e-i-d-i-n-g things my way dot tv tonight and watch all 12 episodes and you can find all about our marriages, how many times, what happened, who was in between, what, and all of the drama that unfolded, um, even concerning Pope, at the end of, the, of us pastoring traditionally and post-pastoring mm -hmm. traditionally. All of that is very interesting, so go and watch that. But I will say this. Mm -hmm. I may not propose... But I do know how to carry myself in such a way that I'll get that proposal. <laughs> right. But see, that, but okay, 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 okay. That's what needs to happen. But see, that is the reason why maybe we're seeing women asking for pros because... They don't know that, how. Yeah, the men, the men aren't really asking them to marry them. Because right. they, they, the women are giving away the milk. They are... The milk, just want to say you, you can get the milk without the cow. It's old saying. How they they're get, they stand together, they're doing everything that married people do. So it's like, what's the point? But see, they shouldn't allow that to go on, I don't think. They shouldn't allow that. I think there's something to those old traditions of you don't shack, you don't live together, you know, until you marry. Some of those things, even if they did, wasn't, you know, biblically sound and was just a passed down thing in Christianity it sort of created a certain kind of consciousness and a respect level for the marriage right. that it don't look like a lot of people have no more. Right. Yeah. I, I just feel like... And I, I, knew I, had, I knew I had to propose to you. I knew I had to talk to your daddy. I knew mm -hmm. I had to, you know, be around the family, know the family, and I, I was not just marrying you. I married the whole family. Right. Yeah. What were you about to say? I was going to say, I just feel like that part is probably missing because well, now that I'm thinking about it, we have a we have more parents that are not present. Mm -hmm. um, we have young parents um, that's probably more so in the club than raising their kids. So we really don't know how to be a woman that attracts who you want. I'm not going to say just a man, but attract a, a husband who you want. And uh, yeah, and, and attract a husband that you will want—a husband, right. not just a nigga. Right. Because my children, we go out all the time, and they Zoe gets furious. <laughs> 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 like men will try; they they stare, but they will not approach. Because I know how to put up a wall to where if I don't want you to talk to me, you're not gonna come towards me. Now, if I want you to say something, I'll let my guard down. And then that's when they'll see somebody come speak. Why he come speaking to you? Don't he see us sitting here? Don't he see us there? So it's just a matter of knowing how to have that aura to attract what you want, mm. you know, mm. and keep that, keep your guard up for things that you don't want. Yeah. But you have to be whole within yourself to do that, though. Wow. Well, this sparked a good conversation. Um, that's, that's great. So we just played, for those who do not know, this, this, we just played a video and Lisa came in and gave her point of view from a woman's standpoint um, as it relates to women asking men to marry them. We have two more things we got to discuss. 
one about Matthew Stevenson and the other one about Jamal Bryant. And I told Patreon that I was not going to discuss this out here. You didn't see the post, Patreon? Somebody else said they didn't see the post. I don't know what's going on, you know, but we are going into um, a retrograde. So that we have a problem with electronics leading right up to about to go in Merc- Mercury, about to go in rec- retrograde. They always doing something. Yeah, so whenever that happens, we have problems with this kind of stuff. But yeah, you go into, um, I, we post, there's a lot of comments. There's hundreds of comments up on there. Oh, wow. So we've been discussing it. But I'm going to discuss it out here. Um, and for those of you that wanted to see the conversation about money, prophecy, and all that between me and Bishop Jordan, it was done last week. It's in the Patreon as well. He was in Orlando. I was in Orlando. We did it together, side by side. So become a patron, patreon.com slash Larry Reed Live. Do that tonight. You have a lot to entertain yourself with over there. But when I come back right now, Leandra has a message for you concerning Dr. Diane's event. And I will be right back. Welcome to Ecclesia Global Virtual Conference 2021 with your host, Dr. Diana the Deal Breaker, with gospel recording artist Leandria Johnson. Hi, I am Leandria Johnson. I'm so excited to announce that I will be joining Dr. Diana the Deal Breaker and other powerful keynote speakers at the 2021 Ecclesia Global Virtual Conference, June 24th through 26th. I am Leandria Johnson, and I'm so excited to see you there. Register now at EcclesiaGlobalConference.org. June 24th through 26th, Ecclesia Global Conference 2021. You don't want to miss a mighty move of God. Register today. All right, and we are back. Remember the link, Ecle- EcclesiaGlobalConference.org, right? No, dot .com. Dot .com. Go there and you're able to do the tickets. I see somebody in the chat on YouTube named John Burke. Oh, I need my laptop charger now. So I didn't even bring- oh, here it is. Oh, this is the- somebody else's, but I can use it. No, I can't. I know, but it's going into this other thing. Okay, yeah, grab it for me. Um, John Burke is saying that we're shacking. They're saying because my, the mother of my children lives in my home. Um, but he also made something else. That that's not true. He said that my assistant pastor, which is the senior associate pastor, uh, care pastor, Bryant, lives in my home. He does not. He lives in his own, his own home. Um, and said that we're checking, but his former wife does live with him, help him raise his child. So somebody said, well, he said, when you guys are shacking, we're not in a sexual relationship. At least I can speak for me. At least I don't know what Michael and Latrice doing. But I speak for, we're not in a sexual relationship. We're not in that type of relationship. We are living together. Actually, she's living with me so that we can raise our children together and give them family, which goes to what I was saying concerning like we're still sort of keeping the family together and maintaining our vows. Um, Roland Martin is going to be at this event and Kara Sheard and Leandria Johnson. So make sure that you, I got to plug up my charger, y'all, in here. Uh, all right, we're about to discuss Matthew Stevenson and J. Mouth. So you can get a promotion and not have to pay that whole price. Make sure y'all use promo 40 so that you can pay um, a discounted price. Oh. At the conference that is going to be happening next month. Somebody said, why is it anyone's business? Well, I'm a public figure, which does not mean that all my business is your business, but if you watch Reading Things My Way, I told you way more of my business that you need to know. And then I'm doing a documentary that will begin to air at the end of the year and will air on this platform. It's already in the works. Um, interviews, tapings, all that's already in the works that I'm going to share a whole lot here on this platform. I don't mind it. I've always been a transparent person, so I don't mind it. So, All right. 
A little Mika Money then came up and said, who over here telling lies about <laughs> Y'all don't give them people. I unblocked. Now, Phyllis Glenn had hidden him from the whole platform, but I've unhidden you now, John. So let's ask your question. Said They said it and have said it many times. So what the hell is your problem, John Burke? You're probably going to end up getting blocked if you're over here talking crazy. But if you got a question, you can ask a question or a comment. But my moderators... And Phyllis ain't going to play. Like she just said, please, y'all don't start that, please. I don't like blocking people, but don't do that. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord Jesus. And you know what? I've learned not to give um, certain people so much, um, especially when you can look at their page and tell they're a troll. And so if y'all end up wanting to block him, you can go ahead and block him. It's I, it's I, I. All right. Say it again. Or what Lisa saying? She said, if you front, I'm sure Lisa said it. It will come up. <laughs> you will know. He's, <laughs> you will probably know. <laughs> it will just come up. Well, yeah, it will. It will become content. Yeah. So I said, y'all may as well stay married. You know, it's a good. We should have to do a show about that. Um. Because marriage is much more than that. Um. It's a combination of things that marriage has to give both parties. Um, and marriage is psychological, it's financial, it's vocational, um, it's sexual. Of course, don't nobody have no problem with that part. But it's a whole lot of different things. And, and if it does not serve all of those things, it, it can be the area of the whole through which something can come through and, and create some drama and some craziness. And marriage comes with certain expectations too. And so when you don't have the marriage certificate there, because it is a cultural construct, um, we do see it in our Christian Bibles, but when it comes to how it is thought to be in our society, it comes with certain expectations. Um, now we did define our own marriage. We've done marriage our way. But even with that, I think every marriage does. But even with that, there were some problems with it. We get along better now than we ever have. We lost our friendship in our marriage. I'm sure Lisa would agree. We lost our friendship in our marriage. And because of that, we probably both became selfish on what we wanted the other person to do and to be. And when we didn't get our way, we were not nice to each other and didn't make it easy for each other. Um, I don't ever want to go back that, to that again, ever, ever, ever. And who knows what the future holds, but I say that not th talking about just her. I'm talking about anything. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm open. I'm 100% open. And, um, but right now, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on my business, my dreams, what I want, my children, you, all of y'all. I'm not thinking about nothing else. My life is filled up with love, all sorts and types and kinds of love. I think everybody looks for the romantic, but there's amorous, there's familiar. Philia, there's all these different kind of loves, and I got all of them. I'm fulfilled. A love like that will be extra and a cherry on top, but I can wait for that. I, I, there's something I'm trying to get. This year, I want to generate millions of dollars um, for all the businesses, including the ministry, the, the record label, all, every business my name is tied to, collectively, I want to generate millions. Last year, uh, I did good last year, but it wasn't the millions that I wanted. This year, um, I mean, it was millions, but not a whole bunch of millions. But this year, I want to generate, because I generate the money for all of, all of everything. Um, it may not all go in my pocket, but <laughs> it comes in. And I want this year, I need to generate three million in the stock market. And I need to do at least for all of the businesses coming in, 
I need to do seven. So that's a $10 million goal, right? For 2021. That's where my head is at. I got a script that was just put in my lap for something I have to go do in LA. That's where my head is at. I'm not thinking. I'm good on the rest of it. Now, I'm not telling you to think like me, but that's where I am. So, um, that's where my head is at. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Oh, Larry, can Lisa do a teaching for the ladies on Patreon? Somebody asked on YouTube, Lisa. Anytime she want to, she can. Anytime she want to, she can. Anytime she want to, she can. Lisa. Now, she does it with, with those that um, she responsible for in the Reformation Church of Atlanta. She does it with them. Yeah. Okay, so let me get on back to what I... Oh, the last two. We ever done a commercial? All right. Who want to do first? Um, let's do J, J Maul first. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you J Maul Harrison Brian. Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, um, as you look upon this picture, this was not posted by Pastor Jamal J. Maul Harrison Bryant, but it was posted by the DJ down there. What's the name in Atlanta? All right. So the conversation is this. The conversation is about what's in his hand, the cigar. Um, yeah, you blew it up more, didn't right? The cigar. Now, my conversation is the outfit, but your conversation is the cigar. This is not Larry Reed Live's conversation. This is your conversation you were having online. Send it to my inbox in the comment section. And so we went over to Patreon and had the conversation about it. Now I'm bringing it out here. This is not Larry Live's conversation. It's not about the cigar. It is, that's your conversation. So let me talk about this. You already know all of my feelings concerning j Maul. I praised him on this platform for I don't know how long because of what he was doing. But I also jack him up when he do something that don't make no sense to me or that I discern as being one way or the other. Um, that whole T.I. thing when they came to the church, Kanye, that's when I first started dragging him about that. Then I came right back and praising some more, some more, some more. Because I'm balanced. Then when he went out there talking about this not having a baby thing, then I found out he did have a baby. I did get on the platform and say, you know, I dare you say Larry Live is lying. You need to come live and like you told the other vlogger that's now dead, God rest his soul. Um, I dare you say that because I'm going to pull the trigger. Um, I must say that that was my ego. Uh, <laughs> just put it Make it plain. Um, I should not give a challenge like that to him. I should have just stuck to tell him what was public and what the truth was after Monique on Potomac Housewives said all the stuff of what she said, and I should just stay with that and not 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 push that that way. Um, and I don't have no problem with saying that. I do believe he's a media whore. I believe he loves the camera. He loves to be talked about. He loves getting on the wings of whatever is popping and talking about it. I do believe that. Um, yeah. I do believe for a pastor in a church that 
Well, let me just say it like that. He couldn't pe- be my pastor. Let me just say it like that. He can't be my pastor. But what we were discussing in Patreon is that the world is changing. And it appears to me that there's quite a few people that want a regular nigga as a pastor. And J. Maul is a regular nigga. That's why I call him J. Maul, because that sounds like somebody around the corner. And although he's good at speaking, he does good at um, preaching and showing up and speak. Uh, he's doing, he doing something somebody love because the folk at the church and folk invite him to preach. So, can't be my pastor. But these folk love this. So, considering how the world has changed, And the world wants leaders that are transparent and leaders that are, you know, just like them. Maybe cigar smoking J. Maul, hookah smoking J. Maul, woolly for children J. Maul is what some people want. And if those of us who don't want that, those of us who are not down with that, then we need to have the conversation concerning J. Maul, cigar, civil children, whatever, hookah, and all the stuff that's been put out that he allegedly done. Um... We have to have that conversation as this is our opinion and this is what we think. And it's not what we want. It's not what we want to pastor us. It's not what we want our pastor to be. As opposed to making a judgment in a way um, that can be way more than just bias. Um, Can we say the the Bible says X, Y, Z? Oh, absolutely. But there ain't no way in the Bible said anything about smoking. But there are a couple of scripture in there where it's talking about don't let your, uh, your good be evil spoken of. Is it wrong or sinful? Let me say this. Is it a sin for J. Maul to smoke a cigar? I wish Brian Meadows that I had on the, up here the other week would tell me what he thought. Is it a sin for J. Maul, Harris, and Bryant to smoke a cigar? When we do not know. But is it a sin for him to be seen with a cigar in his hand on social media? I would say yes, because it could be harmful or stumbling block to somebody. Is it a sin to have a picture of him smoking hookah all over the internet? Yes. Is it a sin for him to have a whole lot of children, some public, some not public? Yes. Are those sins forgivable? Yes. Should they not be named amongst a leader in the community? Yes. Does that make that leader on its way to hell? No, because he can repent. Can a leader like that be Larry Live Leader? Hell no! I said, hell no! Hell no! Hell no! That's just my opinion. But for you, it may be all right. I may not be a a great pastor. Those in the Reformation Church of Atlanta, they love me. Those that I am pastoring in Patreon, they love me. But I don't know. I'm probably not. I'm sure I'm not plenty of people's example of leadership. You know, so it's just my opinion. It just... Oh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. J. Mo, I need for you to stay up out. Up. Why did you put the cigar behind your thigh? You should just tuck it behind your thigh. Instead of putting it, let it be out there like now everybody discussing it now. 
It's lit. Oh, it's lit up. It's lit. It's, it's active. It's an active cigar. <laughs> but I, I don't think smoking a cigar is sin for everybody. And it would take me too long to explain that. Um, it could be just something that somebody do, you know, to calm. A drink could be something that somebody do to calm. Um, even if that got a little marijuana in it. Um, and it's not something that is an addiction or way of being. It may be something they do socially. I'm not going to say that it is a sin in private. But then when you start, remember what I give as a definition of sin. First of all, it's irrational. This isn't smart. This isn't rational for a church leader. So this is, this, this is sinful. Um, if it brings harm to others and to yourself. Well, smoking can bring harm to yourself, especially a cigar. And, the, and there's no filter in the cigar, is it? The filter, there's a filter in the, in the cigarette and a cigar. I think you get more of the, um, of, of the, of the what have you. So that's, that could be, you know, in excess, that could be a sin. But definitely out here in front of everybody else, that can be harmful to somebody, you know. So, oh, Lord, it's just, just don't do it so it ain't got to be this darn good. Lord have mercy. Mm. I'm, I'm looking to see what y'all saying. Hmm. There are 1,487 of you watching me on YouTube. I need for you all to hit like. There's still 562 of you watching me on Facebook. I need for you all to hit like and share. Yeah. Lisa said, I think it's status when you smoke cigar. Yeah, I mean, there's a cigar a bar right here that a lot of celebrities go to. And this could have been what he rented out. Um, no, cause he think he think he had this at his house because CeeLo Green was at his house for his birthday, and he had a big birthday. Um, he was DJing, they were dancing, everything right there on the church ground for his birthday. Um, yes, yeah, smoking cigars sort of it is a community, um, and then it's very expensive. Um, they said in cigar smoking, you don't inhale the smoke. I don't know nothing about cigar smoking. I know I ain't never did it in my life. All right, next and last topic. All right. Internet sensation T.S. Madison. She made a post and she shared the post um, of we're about to play it, so you gotta run one key, one thing queued up. Right. I sent the video. Yes, you downloaded it. I sent it right before we went live. You downloaded it. Put it in there. You cut it I said, don't worry about cutting the top off. Um, T.S. Madison, she made a post. Don't bring it over yet. Make it bigger. She made a post. Right there. To where it says, show the name at the bottom. She made a post of an old video we discussed up here on this platform. I called her Maddie, M-A-D-D-Y, um, Dr. Matthew Stevenson, Apostle Matthew Stevenson. The reason why I call him Maddie is because he's always fussing. The way that he preach and teach is, is quite a bit of, it's quite fussy. And then in comment sections, he go off and is pretty fussy. Some of his posts are pretty fussy, so I call him Maddie. Um, one of the bound on her flow was like that real maddie like so anyway <laughs> I saw this post and I'm like oh lord this is not good now T.S. Madison you know she is a, she is a church girl and even her jokes and stuff is going to be churchy and the song she sings churchy she's a church girl she's the child of a church mother and but she's a big to do in the LBGT community, and her star is rising, truth be told, even the more beyond that community. And so she posted <laughs> a clip that we discussed here on this platform, and it looks like King Jobs posted it on his platform. I see his tag at the bottom of it. And she actually posted 
the King Jives clip that 10 Magazine posted. And we'll look at what it said. Let's look at what Maddie said. If you are in here and you are on Jacked, the meetup app, get in the line. You are backslidden. May the fear of the Lord come upon you. I know there's eight of you right now. One of you have the signal on. Your screen is cracked. Get in this line. If you are in. So, Jacked in the LBGT community, J A C K apostrophe D or J A C K D. It is not what I said the first time I report on this. Jacked like J A C K E D. That's not how it is. It is an app. Now, yeah. In that community, there's certain apps Jacked, Grinder, B C G or B C B G. She says it. T.S. Madison says it whenever she's doing her introduction. Um, and she names all these other apps where you can meet people, not just apps for the same gender-loving community or the trans community, but apps for every community. And so <laughs> Matthew Stevenson's ministry is pretty um, eclectic. Um, but one of the main veins of his ministry, they have a lot of what appears to be and rumored to be former homosexual people, male and female. Um, they tend to somehow another find love, get married, and um, Matthew Stevens and his wife do well with that type of going on. Well, for years, people have speculated about his sexuality. On this platform, we never have. We did fuss about a picture that surfaced with him embracing some man. He was on his chest and stuff, but... but he was saying it's my son and all that kind of stuff. And I first said, you need to stop putting that kind of stuff out, which we ain't seen that no more. He was very emotional and very like that when it came to all his sons. And we put that kind of stuff out there all the time. And I thought it was just crazy to do. Now, since he's done being burnt up one side down the other side, he don't really be hugging and embracing nobody. <laughs> he done. But anyway, he also looks very... Um, I'm going to say flamboyant, some will say, or some will say very fashion forward or seem to be very metrosexualist. He can't showed up on the scene with very long hair, very manicured nails, and he's went through all sorts of changes and all sorts of outfits. So when this rebuke was played on T.S. Madison platform, then some of the LBGT community were like, look, you saying we nasty need to be delivered because we're on the app trying to meet up somebody. Um, truth be told, on the app to find somebody to ferruck. Not saying everybody up there is doing it, but the majority go up there for a one night stand around the corner with somebody you can hear and go find. Um, and some took to offense. So I saw this post by Jarrell J. Hunt. I saw it. It wasn't sent to me. And this is what he said. And this is just what happens. You know, you're a public figure and you say something, folks, to start dragging you. He said, you not finna rebuke me for being a butch queen. And this how you dress and adorn yourself. Now, I'm only showing you a picture of this post. But the comments are outrageous. And he shows all these different pictures of all these different looks of Apostle Matthew Stevenson. Well, <laughs> this, this is what I'm going to say concerning this. First of all, if you're a public figure, you, this is going to happen. Folk are going to have an opinion about what I'm saying. And then if you are touting sexual purity to the same gender loving and then you yourself <sighs> this is so this is so tedious because he's in his church and he has every right to believe that Ben on Jet means that you need to be delivered. 
That's his belief. And he has the right to say that's what he believes and to preach it in his church. Here's the caveat. The caveat is that this is 2021, and every time you see a cell phone, you're looking at all of the world. And so we all need to talk, speak, especially you pastors, in a way to where it is digestible to all and not just your flock. Maybe when you are trying to indoctrinate or teach your flock, you may need to um, maybe turn off the web or maybe you need to make it to where only members can log in to see. But you put it out for the whole public. It's going to be judged in the public. And for Daryl J., Darrell J. Hunt, he felt offended that you were calling out his same gender love, lovingness and the app he wants to use to find same gender loving while at the same time you look like you part of the community with your nails and hair and your outfits you'd be wearing this so darn tight. It's just how it is. <laughs> I can't I can't say nothing about that. I mean this, you said what you said, Matthew, so now he's saying what he said. It's just simple as that. But you can't make Matthew wrong for preaching what he believes. You can't make him wrong for what I believe. And you can't make Jarrell J. Hunt wrong for saying what he said because it's what he said. It's what he think. <sighs> okay, J Jeremy Chub Chub, that is hilarious, Copeland, said, Larry, that's what the problem is. We sugarcoating too much to satisfy people's feelings, uh, which is flesh. Okay. I don't know if you have the sugar coat in the church, but if you want to have a worldwide web ministry, I mean, putting it out before the whole world, you're going to have to package in a certain kind of way. That's just what the truth is. Um, I don't call that sugar coating. I don't see that as sugar coating. If you're going to talk to the whole world, you, you got to talk to the world in a way that win them and not offend them. Now, the truth comes with offense, but there's a way we can talk to where there's no offense coming from our, our personal beliefs and biases. The offense is coming from the spirit of truth that is in what we're saying. Oh, my God. Somebody said, how did he know that they are in there except he was a member? He probably downloaded the app and keep it on his phone to watch it and come when he come to church and look and see. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. It sounded like he was touting that the Lord was revealing this to him in the moment. It was, it was a prophetic flow. But in my opinion, <laughs> I would just download the app, make up a fake profile, and just look and see if there's somebody as close... That is how all dating apps work. You can do it according to the area that you are in. And um, but he said your screen is cracked, so he's being prophetic. So yeah. Or somebody on his team. I'm no team. He was being prophetic, but I don't think there's nothing wrong with a leader or a pastor monitoring, <laughs> you know. In some way, maybe a staff or however. So if we find out he downloaded the app and he just got on his phone to check and see who else out there, the Lord has brought us and then go to another. Why is you up here like this? I see you up here. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Because clearly he's used to dealing with this community. Somebody, somebody said he's prophetic like that. I can believe that. Somebody said, one of the ushers saw that crack screen. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. I want to thank you so very much for watching. If you laugh tonight any little bit, any little bit, then before you leave, make sure you hit our cash app or any other way that you decide that you want to donate. Right now, I'm putting in the chat a way that you can donate. If you enjoy tonight's platform, please help us out and be a part of what we're doing here. We are not just Larry Live, you see, come up here. We are a whole thing with employees and all. 
Um, and you doing this will help us do what we do. Our patrons every week do very well in keeping us built up. And those of you that watch us, a lot of you, every time we come live, you're moving like that. So thank you so very much. Um, and become a patron. Become a patron and help us here on this platform. I want to thank you for your support all these years since I've been doing this, especially since 2018, because I've done it every single day all the way to December 2020. I mean, every single Monday night and other days of the week. And you stay right there supporting me. Now I'm on a little piece of a break and you're still here supporting me. Thanks to over 2,000 of you that are still watching me right now between YouTube and Facebook. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, until next time, I'll see you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Let's do the, the, the what's the name? Social media thing. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words Larry Reed Live, no spaces, 233222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today.